Many of us are living in a snow globe. Carleton College is a snow globe. A beautiful, perfect, liberal arts college. Right? One of the smallest and the best. It's a place where you literally set world records for spooning on the ball spot. <laughs> Imagine what happens when you bring together your collectivity to do the world's largest clothing drive, food drive, dr toy drive for a women's shelter. Right. The collective power can be used to entertain or it can be used to inform, but it can only happen when we shatter this snow globe. There is something idyllic about Carleton that is beautiful, but you can only see the contents of a snow globe, winter, or race in true life when you shatter it. So much like I did when I was eight years old, I would like to shatter that snow globe for you. But one of the things I do, especially when I speak at some of this country's most elite institutions, is I have arguments and debates with heads of women's studies departments who say to me, no, agency, prostitution is empowering of women. And what I counter with that is, ever notice who's doing the choosing? those who have few choices. It was a really passionate uh, speech that Norma Ramos gave and that a lot of people were affected by it. Either they really agreed and they were rallying to action or they disagreed a lot and they wanted to talk about it. Uh, so after her presentation, I think it was on the Monday after, a couple people just kind of spontaneously decided to have a discussion about this in the GSC, uh, the Gender Sexuality Center. And I think like a group of about 20 or 30 people came and just were talking about their views on sex work or sex trafficking, depending on how they saw the issue. It was a really good and productive conversation and got a lot of people talking about an issue that doesn't always get talked about at Carleton. And so I lay this story before you today and encourage you in your lives to be about real stuff. Don't get caught up in the trivial stuff. Now I got a Kindle and uh, now I can Twitter uh, uh, the Pope. I know y'all don't Twitter the Pope. But anyway, <laughs> go for the real stuff. And it's always about love, love for everybody, love for justice, all the big noble things. This was an issue I was already interested in, but hearing her speak about it was just incredibly inspiring and motivating to me in realizing that there is a much larger movement out there beyond just the volunteer work that I do. One question I'm often asked is whether one person can make a difference. And the answer to that question is resoundingly yes. And you're that person. Most of the chapters of Africa's development are yet to be written. Most people I met there welcomed foreign attention to their concerns and put their hopes, often exaggerated hopes, in what cooperation with Americans could bring. Nowhere is that more true than the fight against AIDS. There was a man who came who talked about his Peace Corps experience, and I had been flirting with the idea, and it wasn't until him when I really realized that I definitely wanted to go into the Peace Corps in the future. Combo has inspired me to try and change my life in the way that I'd always been really interested in doing volunteer work, and it wasn't until I learned what I wanted to do in the future with the Peace Corps where I could really like, kind of narrow in and focus on what type of volunteer work I wanted to do. You're sitting in here today and you go to this great college, and I don't know if you've ever used this word about yourself, but you're privileged. I mean, why are you sitting here? Do you know what the educational level of most people in this country is, especially people of color, especially people in the inner city? In New Orleans, more than half of people who start high school don't graduate. The schools are in a terrible shape. You get to come to Carleton. Why you? And what's going to be asked of you because of what you learn and what you know. So the journey begins. <laughs>